many Pauline scholars kind of cheat a little bit when they make very basic decisions about how to frame up their story of Paul. They all have to make judgments about which letters Paul wrote, uh, what order he wrote them in, how many pieces they should be in, if they've been stuck together by an editor, whether they're authentic. We all tend to make prejudicial assumptions right off the top and throw a whole bunch of letters out, say they're not by Paul, just because we don't like them. I thought, well, we just have to go back and kind of clear all that bad argumentation away, clear the ground and ask ourselves again what's going on. And I came to some su surprising conclusions. I actually concluded that more of the letters were authentic than is commonly granted. So I, I ended up taking a surprisingly strong stance on Ephesians and Colossians and Second Thessalonians. I just think there are no good reasons initially for questioning their authenticity. Often the debate is, well, are these faked or are they real? And that was not what was at stake. What was at stake was, I think, there was an attempt to, to rescue Paul's interpretation from people who were doing tremendous damage to the church. A reading of Paul lay behind this kind of blatantly heretical and destructive approach. And it was, it was really only a, a recovery of what he was saying in a kind of a safer, more moderate, more orthodox way that really saved it for the Bible. So it was a, it was a quite distinctive recovery.